How is Ehlers-Danlos connected to scoliosis? Scoliosis is a structural spinal condition that causes the spine to develop an unhealthy sideways bending and rotating spinal curvature. The scoliosis is a progressive condition, so it's nature to worsen over time and become more severe. Typically, progression is typically associated with growth. Now, we normally break down scoliosis into types of scoliosis, and there are three main types. There is something called idiopathic scoliosis, which is the most common type of scoliosis. Now, the scoliosis is happening for unknown reasons. There is something called congenital scoliosis, and this is when scoliosis happens at birth, and it's because there's a malformed or asymmetrical vertebra that develops in utero, and the patient is born with a scoliosis or curvature in the spine. And then the last type is something called neuromuscular scoliosis. And neuromuscular scoliosis is a type of scoliosis that happens because of some type of neuromuscular syndrome or problem. And this is normally associated with that condition. Now, when we look at Ehlers-Downer syndrome, synd Ehlers-Downer syndrome is one of these neuromuscular sy syndromes, and it refers to a group of genetic disorders that actually weaken the body's connective tissue, like collagen causing ligaments and muscles and tendons to become a more flexible or more lax relative to a normal patient. These ligaments, as they become more lax, they don't have the strength to surround and support the spinal structures and joints like they normally would. When we look at any type of syndrome and the connection between Ehlers-Downer syndrome or EDS and scoliosis, how much it's connected to is unknown as well because the severity of the Ehlers-Downer the, comes in a wide variety. And these genetic disorders that affect these neuromuscular components, things like cerebral palsy, like Ehlers Downer syndrome, like Marfan syndrome, these are all syndromes that could affect joint and connective tissue. Sometimes they have more severe curves, sometimes they have curves that are not so severe. But when you look at a patient that has Ehlers Downer syndrome, we have to consider that scoliosis is a possible thing that could happen. When we look at the severity of Eller Downers, one way of determining how severe Eller Downers can eventually become is something called Brighton score. Now, Brighton score is a score that we use to determine joint flexibility, and they score that out of zero to nine. And zero to four is typically considered to be a normal range. When you start getting five, six, or seven, joints tend to be hyperflexible. A score like nine will be very, very hyperflexible. So this range really determines how complicated the scoliosis can be when we look at a scoliosis patient. Now, one theory of actually idiopathic scoliosis is that many patients that don't have full diagnosis of Ehlers-Downer syndrome could potentially have hyperflexibility and not have the diagnosis of Ehlers-Downer's and still develop scoliosis. So these syndromes have a wide variety or wide range of presentation. It's kind of like autism. You know, some people are autistic and they, they have very, very obvious signs and other patients are autistic and you barely can tell because the syndrome presents itself in a very mild manner. But whatever the presentation is, we have to look at Ehlers-Downer syndrome and potentially other symptoms and complications that can happen. Anything that affects joint stability, so kyphosis, excess rounding of the mid-back could be one of the things that we're associated with Ehlers-Downer syndrome. Early onset of arthritis because the joints are hyperflexible, they could wear a little bit faster. Joint dislocation is one of the things that we're concerned with severe cases of Ehlers-Downer syndrome. Some patients have so severe hyperflexibility that they step off stairs wrong, they can dislocate knees and elbows, they could be very careful with contact sports or any kind of injury. Fractures, um, typically because of joints, that they can kind of become hyperflexible, loose and fragile skin, splinter bones, and then of course pain. When we look at our downer, there's no cure because it's, this is a neuromuscular syndrome, and but treatment is really focused on keeping alignment of the of the body and the joints as possible to minimize the risks associated with hyperflexibility. It's the symptoms is really to manage pain and malfunctions that can occur, and increase like the, the normal ADLs or activities of daily life. The focus of EDS typically focus on the prevention on keeping the spine and the body aligned to increase strength, to keep, uh, to keep surrounding ligaments and muscles to avoid injuries. You know, when we look at uh, supplementation, a lot of times supplementation is, can be done for skin and tendons to help healing. We look at targeted physical therapy to help increase spinal support and stability by improving strength and helping keeping alignment is really more, what's, what's important here. Now, when we look at scoliosis and Ehlers-Danlos and how they're connected, scoliosis and Ehlers Downer sometimes can be very complex because it's hyperflexibility. Sometimes it means that we can get some good reductions in the curvature, but they're hard to stabilize. 
And, but other cases could be that they're so hyperflexible that we can't potentially not treat them. It really depends on how flexible this presentation is, like any other type of neuromuscular disorder. And it's because the scoliosis is a secondary condition relative to this Ehlers Downers, but since there's no treatment for Ehlers Downers, when you have a patient that comes in with a scoliosis and Ehlers Downers, you're assessing the severity, but you're still treating the scoliosis almost like a scoliosis because there's no treatment for the Ehlers Downers. So sometimes you're treated exactly the same as any other patient with scoliosis, other cases, modifications have to be made to treatment. Now, one thing that's important, since we're looking at stability, bracing can be very effective in helping managing patients with other downer syndrome because it provides stability. Cases that become very, very severe, unfortunately, will have sometimes consult orth orthopedic surgeons who specialize in kind of structurally stabilizing a scoliosis with surgical fusions, even though these are higher risk cases, and this is, of course, more invasive type of treatment. When we look at scoliosis, it's a serious condition, but sometimes it can develop as a result of more conditions that are associated with the patient, like a neuromuscular syndrome, like Ehlers Downer syndrome. When these scoliosis are considered to present themselves, they're not considered a typical type of idiopathic scoliosis when there's no connection between health or any other diseases and scoliosis presentation. These are considered more atypical pre presentations because less than 10% of all scoliosis cases have a neuromuscular case associated with their scoliosis. Really, the focus of treatment is to improve improve the, the, the function of the spine, reduce symptoms, and really improve the quality of life. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.